again yesterday? Yeah, okay, I thought that was you. Okay. Arkansas game over the weekend. That was like pins and needles. It's a good thing that they went for two at their last touchdown. And got it. 15 seconds. Good afternoon, folks. It's 4 o'clock here, and this is the November installment of the Recreation Committee meeting. Welcome. Glad to see you all here again. And we'll get right into today's agenda. We do have a guest today. I've uh, got notice that uh, we were going to have uh, Jose Mendoza join us to talk about disc golf. He's the disc golf pro. So, Jose, uh, you're welcome to come on up and, and tell us about uh, what's going on with disc golf. Please come on up to that microphone there. Actually, I'm going to have him sit at my chair so he feels a little more comfortable. All right, perfect. A team sport here. Hello. I, uh, okay. So, yes, I was uh, asked to come and talk about disc golf. Uh, the Branchwood course is uh, about to have an, a tournament that is going to bring in approximately 90 players, uh, and there'll be players that are... Um, all the way from some highly rated national players all the way down to beginners, people that uh, maybe can't throw outside of their own shadow, possibly. And, uh, but the tournament is open for everybody, and that kind of is the spirit of disc golf in general. Is, uh, it's a very much um, free-to-play, you know, 99% of the places in the, in the world. 
And so <clears throat> it, uh, it, it, it tends to lend itself to being an inexpensive hobby that uh, is easy, just like I tell people all the time, it's just kind of like a fun way to walk in the park. And so it just adds a little bit of competitiveness while you're walking in the park and you throw some frisbees around. So um, yeah, so we're just here, I was here to talk about that and uh, how good of a course we really have here in Bella Vista. It's, um, it's a very high quality course, uh, appearance-wise, uh, difficulty. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a competitive course. It's, it will make some of these really good nationally rated players uh, play good disc golf to win and uh, that kind of thing. So yeah, I don't know if, what else anybody wants me to cover, but I'm open for any questions, of course, and I, I can talk about disc golf uh, for an endless amount of time, <laughs> actually. Yes? Oh, okay. Yes, the, the training you did? Yeah. So a couple weeks ago, well, probably more than that now, maybe a month ago or so, uh, I just offered to, uh, Jessica and I were talking about it, offered to just volunteer and be out at the course for, um, I think it was about four hours, maybe, I think it was from 10 to 2, and um, if anybody wanted to come learn how to play disc golf, I just made myself available, and I had, uh, I had people there right at 10, and I was there till 2.30 working with people, and probably had... We think about uh, 28 to 30 people show up that wanted to learn how to play disc golf for the very first time. Okay. And I even had one mother call me, and uh, she had a 13-year-old son that just couldn't make it that day due to some other obligations. And so uh, we set up a time afterwards, and we met out at the course again and did a, a lesson with him as well. So he was really wanting to learn how to play disc golf. Good. So um, how long does it take to play a round of disc golf? So at Branchwood, um, two hours. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's on the long end. Uh, you know, Branchwood, you're going down that hill, and you got to come back up, and most people stop on that, uh, the bench for a little bit on the way back up on the back side of the, the course. Um, but, yeah, it's a two-hour, you know, if I'm, if I'm playing by myself, uh, I can get through there in an hour and a half. Okay. But uh, most of the time you're with two or three friends and things like and, that and, as well. And do you pair up or do you go out as a foursome like real golf? Or So in the tournament, yes. Now in the tournament there will be, um, yeah, you, you're, the, the first round is kind of just a mix, but the second round is, is by your score within your division. So the lead card will be the top four scores from the pro division, and they'll start on hole one. And then the, the, the scores five through eight will be on the second hole there as well and that okay. kind of thing and so um but yeah is is there a local league there is um not truly really a, a bella vista league we have a league called the 59 flyers and um it started over in gravit because they got a nine hole course there and there was no nothing really happening with it and i work in gravit and so i'm over there a lot um but i uh so we started a 59 for the Highway 59 because then we also put in another club, another course down in Decatur got in a course, and then Siloam got a course, and Gentry got a course. So it kind of became this whole fit Highway 59 corridor, and that's where the name kind of came from. But uh, yeah, and so there's a Facebook page and where we announce, you know, hey, let's, let's have a, a weekly round at Sunday mornings at Branchwood or Tuesday nights at, at Gravit. And the nice thing about Gravit and all the other courses, kind of close by, especially that one, it's a nine-hole course. 99% shaded, much shorter, easier to walk than, than the Branchwood course is and things like that. That was one thing I noticed from the, the, the day of lessons was, um, and I told everybody, I said, you don't have to play the course as it's laid out. You don't have to throw from this tee box to that hole. There were a lot of people learning to play that, that honestly probably a 70-foot shot is, or a 100-foot shot is the max distance for them. You know, our shortest hole out there is 238 feet. You know, and we have holes up to 600-something feet and things like that. Not that it, you just keep throwing until you get there, right? You know, and so, but uh, I told them all the time, I said, you don't have to throw from this tee box. You can pick your spot where you want to throw from. Make your own course as you're going. You, there's nothing, you're not going to be in the way of anybody. It doesn't throw off the flow of other people playing disc golf and things like that. So, um, cool. you know, don't, don't play the long holes that are over a ravine where you might lose a Frisbee or something like that. So, Yeah. And the last question for me is, do you need a tea time or you just kind of walk up and walk on? No, no tea times. Okay. Yeah, just show up and group up and go by yourself. And yeah, uh, 
get with some buddies and do that kind of thing. That but makes yeah. it nice and convenient. No teens. There, I mean, there are a few, uh, nationally now, I'm thinking of nationally, there are a few where it is so busy at these courses, be, mainly because there's just not enough courses in the area to, su to support the number of players, uh, where they do tee times and it's a $5, uh, $5 to play kind of thing. Uh, and, and, and yeah, you do need to reserve a spot. And you get paired up with people, much like a traditional ball golf course. Gotcha. Yeah, okay. yeah, that kind of thing. So. To get into it, uh, you know, the starter set at Academy is like 20 bucks. Get you three discs, get you a putter, a mid-range disc, and a driver. And, and we do sell those at the Branchwood facility yeah. too. Yes. Okay. Yeah, usually, as long as supply is, just like everything else, disc uh, manufacturing is behind oh, <laughs> this year as well, and that kind of thing. They've seen a boom. So last year, um, there's an app that most people keep their scores on, and it's a digital app to keep your score. Um, that app saw three times as many rounds last year as it did in 2019. And it's up over 20% this year over the tripling that happened last year. And so disc golf, much like a lot of the outdoor sports, has really grown and taken off. And the number of players and, um, and like I said, all the, all, the, all the discs and all the stuff that goes with that as well. And the tournament, um, like the tournament we're hosting here in a couple of weeks, uh, is a PDGA sanctioned, Professional Disc Golf Association sanctioned event. Um, those tournaments have seen a growth as well in, in their participation in number of events and things like that also nationally, actually internationally. It's really boomed. Great, great. Any, any other questions from the committee or yeah, Jose? So for those of us that don't know disc golf courses, what mm -hmm. makes the Branchwood course so challenging? Some of it, the tight OBs. Uh, the Branchwood uh, trail and course is mowed very well. So we're allowed, we're, we use the short grass as inbounds. So if you're in the tall grass, we call it out of bounds. Now, once again, if I'm out, if you're out playing, it's your first time, you may not do that, right? You don't have to do that. But during a tournament or during a mini league or something like that, so we keep the OB very tight, you know? And, and so you have a, there's a lot of natural OB. There's a creek that runs through a lot of it and things like that. The path and beyond. So if the basket's on this side and here's the path, well, if you're on or beyond that path, we call it OB too. So uh, the tight lines, um, most of the comments that we, that I see on uh, about Branchwood or just about um, how pretty it is, how, how much they enjoy the course. Um, a lot of disc golf courses are kind of, uh, municipalities will use them in places that are flood zones that they really can't do anything else with the land. It's like, oh, let's give, let's give our, um, I, I, I compare a disc golf course a lot of times to uh, playground equipment, but this is playground equipment for people from you know, 12 to 80 <laughs> instead of 12 and under, you know, and so it's kind of playground equipment for adults and, and things like that, but they, they put it in places that, that usually aren't all that attractive. There's a lot of pretty courses out there, but Branchwood has a, a very nice piece of land that has a disc golf course on it. Mm -hmm. Jessica, you got a question or statement? Yeah, I was just saying, Jose is being modest. He, um, does everything besides the mowing really 99% of it is is done by himself and volunteers um, virtually I mean they extend tee pads they'll even go out there in some of the harder areas that our mowers have a hard time to get to they'll go out there they'll weed eat he spends a lot of weekends and a lot of time you know he loves Bella Vista he lives here but he loves that course and he organizes a lot of stuff for that course so we're very fortunate to have him so thank you for coming sure, too of course. Yeah, thank i you really very much. appreciate it appreciate it appreciate the overview and sure of course yeah <laughs> oh and no, i was I'm also going to say sorry I <laughs> don't get red i was also going to say for the disc golf tournament too we're pairing up with the highlands and so the people pay an um, amount of money to be in the tournament and um, they collect that money and put it back into the course but also um, they're going to be purchasing food for their lunches will be purchased from Highlands and they're going to be able to leave and go to Highlands and then they can go back there when the day's done too so that's nice we paired up with them so that'll be a good match 
It'll be a good time. November 20th, Saturday. I don't know if you said that. Yeah, no, I didn't. Spectators, of course. Yeah. Yeah, and there is amateur. I think we um, from all different. In fact, I think was it two years ago? The guy, there was a guy who lived like down the road, and he he I think he had twins. And so his kind of getaway, he had young twins, was to come out there and play the course. Mm-hmm. And he ended up winning the amateurs because sure, yeah. he played the course all the time because mm-hmm. it, it is a tough course. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so it can – any level, any level. He always makes me throw out there too. <laughs> sure, of course. So any level. <laughs> if we're out so, there, yeah. Yeah, if you, if, them, if you get on the link that we put in the connections – It'll or on the rec e letter, it'll take you to it and it'll show you the different levels. So really, anybody, male, female, I don't know if there's an age limit. There's age protected divisions. Okay. Yeah. 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 So if you're starting at 40, 40 and over has certain divisions, 50 over has a different division, things like that. So, yeah, which is good for old pros like me. That's now in my 50s. <laughs> I get to get play against people my own age. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um. Let's say I wanted to go out and watch, but I didn't want to get in the way. How do I do that? Sure, sure. It's, um, the, the nice thing is the, course, the holes are in feet instead of yards. So we're really, you know, it's, it is a lot more compressed. Uh, typically standing by a tee box is a pretty good idea because people will be there and you'll see that throw. You wouldn't be down where you might could get hit or in the way. And, and, and I'm going to say most disc golfers are really good about this. If, if somebody is anywhere in the area where their disc might land or travel, they're pretty good at walking down the fairway and telling somebody, said, hey, this is, a, this is the hot spot. You don't want to be here. You might want to be 30 feet this way or 50 feet that way because um, we're the ones throwing something that could hurt somebody. And so I preach it. There's two things I preach, that walkers always have the right of way, and the other thing is always leave the course better than you found it. So two things I preach to everybody I talk to when they're out playing disc golf. So during this tournament, would y'all rope off the areas like normal For, golf? No, we, not that fancy, I guess is the best <laughs> way to put it, or maybe not that much resource. <laughs> uh, it's probably the best way to put it. Um, larger events that, that you, uh, of course, YouTube has gotten really good, and it's really blown up on YouTube, watching the bigger events, and um, they do that. What they do a lot is like the walking ropes. They'll have a staff that will have the ropes that make sure nobody walks past this, and that's kind of how they do it. Not really grandstands that are already there and set, but, yeah, like a walking rope. And it's usually around the lead card group. Most of the other cards are nobody's watching except their family or something. You know? We've probably got time for one more question, then yeah. we'll have to move along. And, again, sure. thank you very much for your overview. So sure. any, any last questions or comments for Jose? Yeah. I just think. That could be a real um, go-to for family entertainment to watch. Sure. And uh, I don't know how we, I I don't necessarily want to say market it, but, you know, that side of it. Sure. Just because uh, I'm fascinated by it, and I love golf, but I can't play it. I mean, (laughs) I can't throw a frisbee either, so that, that <laughs> but I think that would just be great for, you know, kid families to come out. It really and, is. And watch yeah. it, so I don't know how we kind of get that in people's minds. But sure. It's, I, thank you so much. Sure, there's a, there's a lot of ideas, and I, I'm open to, and Jessica and I talk frequently, but I'm open to always talk some more about it and things like that. There's, there's a lot of cities that have done, um, Emporia, Kansas, a little out in the middle of nowhere kind of thing, has, has really done a good job of promoting it. And they get a tournament every year that has over 1,400 players that show up. And then that also blends into a lot of other things that they can do with that kind of exposure and stuff like that. And so, um, yeah, there's a lot of ideas along that, that line that can really help promote it. And um, like I said, I can always Good work out there. Thanks again. Yes, all right. Thank you. Of course. Okay, now us folks got to get down to our amenity reports. So we're going to kick things off, and uh, Deborah has a trifecta of reports. She's uh, helping pick up for an empty spot that we have. So we'll give you the floor and a microphone. So tell us what's going on at your facilities. All right, so the first thing I want to start with is I walked these three amenities, parks, whatever, this month. 
And as I was grateful for the extra steps I got in, what it really hit me was the amount of lawn that has to be mowed around here um, for all of our amenities. And I don't even know how much there is. I'm sure someone knows. But never once have I ever looked at any park in Bella Vista and said, when are they going to mow that grass? So kudos to that team. Those are you know, the people that do all the work, and we don't notice them until something's not done. So I just was like, it just hit me somehow when I was doing this. So anyway, thank you to the people that do that. Uh, so I'll start with Branchwood. I went on a Thursday afternoon. There were about 25 cars in the lot. The basketball court and the playground were in use. There were two groups playing disc golf, but I couldn't get near them to talk to them and get input, so glad Jose was here. People were walking dogs. About half the fitness equipment was in use. The entire area is really good, clean, and well-maintained. Um, so I had no areas for review this month, and as I said, I didn't talk to anyone. Um, my two comments, though, for, the, for the, out there, I had no idea, I've been going out there since June, silly me, that there are racquetball courts there. So, Denise, thank you for telling me, because I love racquetball and I had no idea. Um, yeah, I found them. <laughs> and I don't know, I don't know if it's a matter of a sign on the wall that says racquetball downstairs. I, when I got home, I looked on the website and I searched racquetball. I couldn't find it, doesn't mean it's not there. But anyway, something maybe we can just blow up and make sure people know it's, it's available. And then in regards to the disc, golf. I knew that Jose was going to be here, and since I've never talked to anyone about it, I was just trying to Google it and learn more about it. And there is, it might be the app he was referring to, but udisc.com. And I just want to read some of the comments from the last 30 days. Fantastic ball golf conversion course. Occasionally had to wait for walkers, but that's no big deal. Awesome and beautiful course. Good mix of long and short holes with some elevation change and dog friendly. Very wet at sunrise, but that's not the course's problem. That's just nature. Love this course. I will be playing it more when I come back to the area. Good course and good upkeep. One of the best in northwest Arkansas. So kudos to the golf course. Nice. Good job, guys. Moving on to Blowing Springs. I went late on a Sunday morning. The park was well maintained. The RV park was still very busy. Uh, there were probably 20 cars in the trailhead lot and five in the back lot. All the weeds were trimmed. That old sign's been removed, so thank you to whoever addressed that from last month. The only thing for review that I noted is in the laundry room, there's some chairs in there. And how this could happen is beyond me, but the bottom lining looks like it's been torn and it's hanging down, so it just doesn't look very inviting. And then behind the campsite area, there is one of the newer shrubs seems to have died, and his friend next to him looks like he's next, so someone might want to take a look at that when they get a chance. Um, in regards to member interactions, I didn't get any of those this month either, but since I was Googling, I thought I would look at Google reviews for the, for the campsite and park, and I found a couple I wanted to share. Great spot. Access to the trails for riding or hiking. The area is well kept. The bathrooms are clean. Hot showers. Plus, you are close to the city to get anything you might need. And nice walk along the Greenway. Stopped at the Gear Garden. Shop for some local beers. Great place to hike, bike, and relax. So thank you guys for that as well. And then the one I picked up for this month was Loch Lomond um, Recreation Complex. I'd never been to this before, so this is the first time I was out there. So I went on a Thursday afternoon. There were about 20 cars in the lot. Several guys were playing football on the softball field. Lots of people walking dogs. Both the dog parks were very active. And overall, the area, of course, was well-maintained, clean, mowed, good. Some things that I just saw that I want to bring up. Uh, in the women's restroom, the ceiling needs some attention. It, a lot of webs. It either needs cleaned or painted. I'm not sure which. The, the, the vent is full of dust and stuff. So um, I didn't look in the men's room because it was so busy. I didn't want to risk going in there. But if someone goes out to address that, they might want to check the men's ceiling as well for whatever reason. Um, I don't know how to address this. So uh, when you're walking, as you're facing the park, if you go around to the right, the, there's a tree root that has just really elevated the walking surface. And I honestly don't know how you fix it unless you paint it yellow, or I don't know what you would do. But it looks like it could be a trip hazard, so someone should probably just take a look at it if they have an idea. Down by the softball court uh, field, it looks like a piece of fencing either was removed or broke, or I'm not sure what, but there's a piece of fencing pipe 
that's high enough for a little kid to grab, and it's jagged and it's rusted, and I would get that pipe pulled out of the ground. Um, it's back behind one of the batter box areas. There also was a hose and some pieces of fencing laying in the batter box on the other side that could be a trip hazard. I would just recommend having them put up. And then the last thing I noted was I walked all the way up over the dam and down to the end of the dam walkway. And at the very end is that irrigation house, pump house. I would just recommend maybe painting it in the spring. It just looks a little out of place compared to everything else around there looking so good. Uh, no member interactions and then additional observations. Again, since this was the first time I was out there, I had a general idea of where it was, but I didn't know exactly where it was and I drove past it. There's no sign, there's nothing identifying what that location is, but it might be something for the future to think about. And then finally, I'm not sure how often the softball field is used, but it could use some TLC. Uh, the pitcher mound area is pulled up and it looks like a trip hazard, as well as second base. And then where the um, where home plate is, is looking pretty rough too. And I don't know, I don't know how often it's used, I, and I don't know if this can be done. Um, if we could get local businesses maybe, you know, I thought of like a baseball field where they buy advertising. I don't know if there would be any interest in maybe doing something like that. We could raise some money and maybe just kind of clean it up in the spring or something. So just an idea to try to raise some funds. Sorry, I feel like I talked too much today. There you go. Oh, good, good to have new eyes on something there too. So appreciate your perspective and great reports. All right, who wants to follow that? Uh, how about Janet? Janet, you have Tyree Park and Lake Mine's Avalon. Mine's a real snoozer in comparison, <laughs> Deborah. My gosh. <laughs> I'm like the community television break between, between um, writing events, prime time. Um, I don't know which one's up first. I want to take Tyree. Okay, my favorite. All right. Um, I have, to, I have to say ditto to what uh, Deborah said about the grass and landscaping being generally well maintained. I mean, it really, I've not seen there be any long grass. It's always a very inviting location. I don't know why more people aren't there, but we're working on it. The playground equipment seemed to be in good repair and back you know, there were a couple people using it. And there really weren't any change in any of the um, picnic tables since my last report. But I would like to say where there are those concrete, pebbly kind of picnic tables, those must be hard to clean and they're also rough to sit on. Yeah. So um, I just, I think that might be in line, and I, I didn't really put it on here, but might be something that would be in line for either replacement or just removal. It almost feels like they're uh, left over from a bygone era, and it's part of a historic... <laughs> yeah. It could and, also... <laughs> and, and I, you know, I, I, if we could do something, I mean, it's kind of nice to have that history behind it, but you don't know what the history is. But it's just, yeah, you know, it's just something to, something to keep in mind. Just real quick on that. Um, we are slowly replacing those because they are very, very old. And um, they do take a lot of work to get them out. And they are not cost efficient to replace with concrete. Um, but right now, when they're bad, we, I, I can't get a picnic table to save my life right now. So just know we're going to, with supply chain issues. Oh. Um, but that is our, we've already In taken a out a number of them across a number of parks. And um, so you're dead on, right? Well, I, I have no doubt of what you guys are on top of all this stuff. And I'm kind of Johnny or Janet come lightly to the, to the party. But uh, I have to be nitpicky because there's so much, there's not much to, to uh, really criticize. Mm -hmm. So, and the restrooms are, are fine. Uh, just all of them are experiencing the same thing with a lot of outside debris coming in, you know, the winds and, and whatever. So really no areas for review. I don't have any other observations. But I tell you, that was like Grand Central Station the day that I went. Um, I've never seen more than two vehicles in that, in that either the top lot or the bottom lot. 
and that includes um, uh, trucks with trailers. And there were some people that were over by the bar picnic grill uh, behind the restrooms, but, um, you know, I, I think it's just a case of, I mean, the more we can get it out there, there's so much room uh, aside from the picnic areas and the playground and the boating ramp, there's a lovely area uh, for kids to play and so forth. So I just think it would be, again, another um, good area to highlight and maybe with those things in mind. Now, moving right along to Lake Avalon Park. Okay. I also love that place. Um, as always, everything was in really nice shape. You know, the only thing that I saw was this tree growing out of a forsythia bush, and it really looked kind of weird. And I'm not sure if we want to maintain that tree in that location, but um, it either needs to come out or, I don't know, something. Anyway. Um, Workers were out there uh, pruning trees, I think. At least that's what it looked like. And the restrooms were generally clean, same thing. Porta potty was clean. There were a couple people out there, um, a couple of kids using the playground equipment. All of the uh, sand areas, both the uh, volleyball area as well as the beach itself, looked really nice. I mean, of course, there are leaves in the sand, but I mean, Otherwise, that and the area where there's lawn tables and chairs and, you know, just kind of greeting areas, the, the shelter. You know, I don't know how you guys do it. I really don't because it's clear that you guys are on top of taking care, enhancing, and, um, you know, just making sure that our parks are worthy of the POA. So that's all I have. Well, very good. So there. That was awesome. And we'll move then to Macy for our report on the Metfield Complex. Um, <laughs> I guess I'm the, I'm gonna pick up kind of where Deborah left off. I mean, everything, the grounds, like Deborah said, immaculate, I mean, I. I've never been to a park where I haven't yet wondered when this was going to get cut because it's always cut. Um, I guess overall the park area looked good. Um, a lot of families out um, on the playground, the bike skills and the pickle court. I actually got to see some pe people playing pickleball for once. Um, the clubhouse looked really good. Um, several members were working out. Everything looked nice and clean. I did speak with, um, I forgot what her name was. It wasn't Cindy, but it was, not Mel, it was, I think I went on a Saturday. A little, yeah, Lily, Lily. She was really, really sweet, and she was perky and bubbly and stuff, and um, she was really excited about the yoga class that morning. She said that there were a lot of people that showed up, and she, she was really, really thrilled about that. Made me want to go. <laughs> um, I spoke with a father and son team at the, pickle, the pickleball courts, and the dad actually approached me and asked me if I knew the rules to pickleball, and I said I didn't. But he said maybe a good thing, a good idea would be to have the rules listed somewhere. Um, I didn't see anything on the rules. But um, he was, he even suggested maybe doing like a small little introductory course to pickleball, like an overview like he would do for tennis, scoring and stuff. Um, he looked online and he said even the stuff that he found on Google and YouTube were sparse on how to even play it. He said he couldn't even put two and two together on how to incorporate the game with the actual game. So maybe doing something like that. Um, another family I spoke with, um, they had zero complaints. They loved the layout of the park. 
they said that it's big enough to where they could have a party and have rooms have room for games um, and such for kids to run around and stuff like that. The only thing that I have for um, review really are the restrooms. It looked like, again, the time of the year, some debris blew in. Maybe that needs to, you know, get cleaned up. Um, also, we were out with our kids and Rick was watching the kids on the playground. The, the wash at the playground has gotten really, really bad. It's now a tripping hazard and I would even say an ankle twist hazard. Um, there's even an island that has been created in the middle of the park from the wash. And it's also gotten bad around the swing set that it looks like some of the um, equipment to the swing set could eventually start to pull up from the ground. Hmm. So that may, may need to be addressed. But um, that's, that's all I've got. Okay, thank you. I saw some notes being made about those uh, matters. We'll come back to the west side of 71 here for Scott to report on the Roden Hall complex. Thanks, Chris. Um, well, when I went to Reardon Hall this time, it was very busy, um, has been busy, and it looks like it will continue to be busy. We had quite a few groups in there when I was in there. They actually had um, an insurance company that was giving some pointers on Medicare, Medicaid to a group of seniors that was in there. Um, the Fly Tires group was in there. Um, there were, the snooker room was full of players. The bridge club was there. So there were a lot of people at Reardon Hall. Um, when I talked with Ashley, she said that she's been getting a lot of new requests for new groups that want to form and start meeting at Reardon Hall. And then she was getting her usual bevy of holiday requests, people wanting to rent rooms for parties and things like that. So very, very busy at Reardon Hall, Lot, lots going on. Um, went over to the tennis center. Um, Jake was out, but uh, got to walk around there. The men's Thursday tennis league was going on, so all of the courts over there were full. Uh, except for three and four, which finally got resurfaced. So they were working on the resurfacing on courts three and four and the pickleball court, and they look amazing. They look really great. Um, so I'm sure the, the tennis players, when they get out on there, are going to be really happy with that. It really looks nice. Um, I did get to show Ashley, and the only, um, the only area I have for review, we've talked about it before, are the, the picnic table decks on the playground. So I was able to take her out there and show her those where the erosion is taking the soil away from the underside of those picnic decks to where it's, it's actually had gotten worse with the recent rains that we've had. Don't know what it'll do in the winter time, but she agreed it needs to be addressed. Um, <clears throat> not for sure how to address it, but uh, it'll probably take some people taking a look at it and figuring out what they can do there, maybe building a, some type of retaining wall or something to keep the dirt underneath those, those picnic decks so they don't become an issue. Um, got to talk to the snooker players. Uh, they love being back in the snooker room after having been held out from COVID and things like that. Um, having a great time um, trying to recruit me into playing. So <laughs> had, had a good conversation with those gentlemen. Um, <clears throat> then got to talk to a couple play, people out playing mini golf. Um, Joan, I'm sure you probably heard this comment a lot, but they absolutely love the Halloween decorations. They, they, they really enjoyed playing out there while those were up. They missed them, um, but understood, you know, they were just out there for Halloween and they, they hoped that that would be something that would be done again uh, next year. So saw a lot of people out there on the course. Um, <clears throat> still gets lots of usage even now, you know, with the cooling off and things like that. But uh, that's all I have for Reardon Hall. All right. That was very good as usual. Okay. So we're going to move to uh, Mary Elizabeth and get her notes on the trails Greenway and Lake Ann. Perfect. So um, I'll start with the trails. The trails look great. They always do. Um, they were kind of being lightly used. As you know, Chris, because you saw me out there, I was out there bright and early yesterday morning at like 9, 30, 10 o'clock doing my duties. Um, so the trail looks good. There's nothing that needs to be done. It's well maintained. People were walking on. There was a lot of older couples that were like bundled up walking early in the morning. So that was good to see it at least still being used by people. Um, when I checked out Lake Ann, it's one of my favorite parks. And so it was nice to be out there, take some good pictures. It looks great. The only suggestions that I have is, do we rent the porta potties that we have here? 
are those rented? Because that's what it looks like via the signs. I think we need to replace the one that's there because somebody's vandalized it and there's swastikas on the inside of it. Okay. So it looks like somebody actually carved some in the roof and then somebody actually took permanent marker and like wrote swastikas on the actual seats. So I put um, pictures in my actual report so you can see them. Are you talking about the um, <clears throat> porta potty right by the boat ramp? Uh, no, I'm talking about the porta potty that's right by the shelter there. So the one that's right there by the shelter. So if you oh. go in, my 14 year old's like very like observant. He went and he looked and he's like, uh, I think you need to check this out. And like in the ceiling, you can totally see that somebody has like physically carved a swastika in there. And uh, okay. I just think we can call them and get it replaced. Okay, that one might, may or may not be ours. The city okay. has maintains one for that trailhead, but I'll check it out. I'll find out which one. Yeah, that would be that really is. cool. Yeah. So that was like the main thing that I saw that I thought would be relatively easy to fix, but like make a huge difference. Um, and then the other thing is in that same shelter that we have, there's like a sign there that basically goes over like the rules and whatnot. And it looks like that's been pretty well eroded away. So I was wondering if we could get a replacement up. Other than that, um, all the parks and everything that I check out, they look great as they always do. So thank you guys for all your hard work. Fantastic. Yeah. Good you. wrap up there. Okay. Another green area, Tanyard Creek from Denise. Okay, thank you. Um, I was there this uh, past Thursday in the morning, and actually there were only nine cars in the lot, which is <laughs> not very many for Tanyard. But again, everything looked fabulous. Every, the grass was mowed, everything was clean, the trash cans were empty, the pavilion was clean, um, all the trails were in good shape, and pe where people congregate free of trash, um, the bathrooms are nice and clean, and the water fountain has been removed for the season, so that's, that's good. Um, my area for review, uh, there is a very large tree, large, I can't even put my arms around it, that has come down across the trail. I have, I have a call in, actually I got a call back while, while we've been in this meeting, of oh, good. having Could, someone to look at that, yeah. Because I know it's been given over to a private company, but we didn't have a date for when it was going to be removed, at least that's what Randy Ham told me. Uh, he talked to Joe. Yeah, I don't, I don't have a date, but, but we're going to get it just as soon as we can. Okay, because although there are cones across it, you can still get underneath those mm -hmm. branches, and because it's balancing, it's really not yeah, safe. That it, needs to that get is right. taken away. Um, my, my other big topic this month is about invasive plants and invasive species. And unlike something like a pothole or a leaky ceiling, this is one of those very subtle but long-term issues that people just don't notice. But with 30 years of it not being dealt with at Tanyard, we are in danger of losing all of our native vegetation to vines and there's a lot of dead trees. Um, there's a number of areas where it's completely just overrun. I have some photos in my report and I have other photos. I mean, and all of us, I think, have seen kudzu. That's what's going to happen at Tanyard if we don't start dealing with the invasive species. And, and we are uh, where that winter creeper, that, that viney stuff, yes. is going up trees. Yep. We're, we actively go in and we cut that. But we do have to be careful of, even, even though we are dealing with invasives, um, it does provide some stream bank stabilization. So around the creek area, I'm reluctant to remove all of that. There are probably natives that would do the same thing. So, and here's my, and here's but, my response to that. You would never allow an invasive species in our lake, such as zebra mussels or Asian carp. And you would actively remove it if you had it. We have to do the same thing at Tanyard with invasive plant species, or, uh, or you're, gonna, you're gonna lose everything you got. I, I, I hear what you're saying, and on a limited basis, we are going to do some work on that. Okay. But um, if you, if not just Tanyard Creek, but if you would look in every, every hollow, trail. every yes. hollow, every invasive species are throughout the POA. Yes, that's um, right. On every trail, every place that people walk, they bring it in on their shoes. Well, and, and, and they, people plant it in their landscapes. And it escapes. And then it escapes. That's right. No, um, I know. We've got burning bush everywhere, and yeah. it's an invasive species mm -hmm. here. So That's true. No, I know. Joan, you Rick, had a does it Does it help? Um, so Rick and I kind of partner sometimes on Tanyard. Does it help in any way because the 
master naturalists have done a good job helping take out some of the evasives in the riparian area at Blowing Springs. Does that help? If you identify it, I know you may not be able to do the work, and Rick's on top of it. I don't mean to say that he's no, not. I know. But is, is, is there some key areas that you're more concerned of that you might want to draw to our attention just to make sure that we're all on the same page? Well, one of the things I was going to look at and comment about is the pond. What was once the pond is a completely choked, weedy bog. It's not a pond anymore, and you've completely lost that small ecosystem from Tanyard. And I actually have, I don't know if you know Cheryl Hall. She's one of our premier plant people in Master Naturalists, and she and I are going to go out there tomorrow and look at the pond to see if that would be something that Master Naturalists could, over time, potentially start working on to pull these invasive species, at least try to do some small amount of restoration on the pond area. I can't guarantee that we, you know, can do it. It's again, it's totally volunteers. It may be bigger than than what we can do, but we were at least going to take a look at it and maybe present that as something that we could manage on a regular basis. So, or it's something Randy Ham's group could potentially take a look at because I know they do the poison ivy and some of the other stuff. But there's probably three or four primary species of stuff that can be managed, and you only have so many ways to deal with it. You can poison it, but you've got all that water. You can burn it, you can pull it, and you can try crowding it out. So there's just not a lot that you can do with it. That's the downside. I know it's a problem. The, the big one there that I would like to see gone is the, is the winter creeper. Yes, bad. Um, it, it is bad. And where, and where it goes up trees, um, we're, we're, we're taking care of it. It is, it is also very hard to kill chemically. It we, is. We, we, we've sprayed in the past, and we also have to be careful that it doesn't volatize and go up and, and, and damage the canopy of the trees, right. which, is, which is an issue. Plus the water table. You've yeah. got all that. you got the stream there. No, yeah. I, I know. It's not an easy one, and that's why I'm bringing it up, but it needs, mm -hmm. it's been 30 years and nobody's mm -hmm. dealt with it. Um, and that's really it. I had a really nice older couple that I talked to, and they were out there, and she's a painter, and she wants a bench put it at the Cascade, and she actually called it Painter's Paradise. So they loved it. So anyway... That's it. Thank you. Okay. So, so thank you for that detailed report. And Denise has provided a number of detailed reports over the last few months here. And so it's good that we keep acknowledging these things and, and keep the matters on the radar. And, and certainly as one of our most prized, beautiful uh, amenities, if it needs budgeting attention, you know, let's, let's keep it uh, in our thoughts here because, you know, we'll be upon 2023 pretty soon too. So, I mean, this isn't... It isn't a one-time, uh, one-month effort to keep a, a place like that beautiful. It's uh, a lifestyle. So I think that's what one of the messages that Denise was, was trying to bring forward. Um, and um, if so, that would be successful. So thank you for all that. Okay, so we have another person, committee member, by Zoom only today. And Gary, if you're still out there, the floor or the TV set is yours here to tell us what's going on at the gun ranges. Yeah, maybe a little bit closer to the mic. Well, Mike's not in the room. Well, you're good now. It sounds good now. <laughs> All right. Well, let me go over the uh, amenity reports of the gun range. Went out there on Saturday. Overall conditions at both sites is still really good. Um, they're clean, well-kept. Restrooms are clean. I didn't see any long-term projects or talk to anybody about long-term projects. Or any improvements that are visible now, but both range masters like what's been done so far. Uh, trap and skeet range, I spoke with Carol. October was a good month. There are a few projects on the board for the near term, uh, installing a new rail fence along the range, um, installing sliding roses on the traps, uh, the traps and installing lighting as well. For the rifle and pistol range, I spoke with Royce, the range master on my day visiting. It was pretty busy. It, Two o'clock, they'd already had 36 shooters out there. So I asked about the water station and the restroom facilities for the bikers' use. A couple of months ago, we discussed that when it first went in, and uh, Royce was concerned about the upkeep of the bathroom and the supplies to support its usage. Uh, he's satisfied with the upkeep and commented that the bikers really appreciate this stop on their 40 mile journey. So it's ended up being a real good thing to be put in. No additional observations at this time. 
uh, places uh, they are busy and John could probably talk to more about the numbers, uh, but it seems to be uh, uh, doing quite well. Thank you. Okay, Gary, thank you. I'll go ahead and wrap up our amenity reports here with the London Park at Lake Windsor. So to summarize this, I just have to say the park's five stars. Everything is clean and groomed and looking very fall-like. Restrooms are clean, good shape. I'll circle back to the women's uh, on, on one little matter there in a second. Fish cleaning stations, fine. Uh, a couple of trailers there with boats out in the lake on a Sunday morning, and there was a couple there walking their dogs. I talked to them. They just walked down from, from the neighborhood just to the east and they really didn't have any suggestions. They just um, loved the place. And circling back now to the ladies' restroom, it was very hot inside. It was a chilly morning, but the heater in there probably needs an adjustment. Uh, the thermostat was probably a little bit too high, and um, it's not user settable in there. So um, if we take a look at that, we'll probably be all set. And that is going to wrap up our amenities reports section of this meeting. We could go now over to the POA staff reports. And Tom Judson always has the honor of starting us off there. A couple things today. Um, uh, activity cards through the end of October. Uh, compared to prior year, we, we've seen an increase of almost 1,500. And uh, over two years, uh, 5,500, which is a 59% increase. So the activity cards are very well received. A lot of people are using them and buying them. Uh, boat registrations are up. Uh, one year increase is uh, 713. Two year increase is 1,769. It's a 34% increase. Majority of that increase is kayak boards, uh, self powered. Um, also wanted to share with you um, at the last uh, board meeting, um, Pizza Kitchen was uh, approved for Highlands. Uh, we're going to be uh, uh, hopefully getting that launched in the uh, February, March timeframe. Uh, so uh, that bar has been very successful and so we're going to be adding pizza up there. Uh, we're going to start slow and then grow from there. So it'll be a limited menu, um, but uh, we, we think that uh, the way we have it set up, I think it's going to be a huge success. Uh, we had the, our preliminary uh, budget meeting with the uh, board, and uh, so a number of rec or lakes, rec-related projects uh, have uh, made it through the, the, the first uh, gate. Uh, the second gate is uh, this Thursday, the budget meeting uh, for the community, and then next week is the, uh, the final approval. Uh, but some of these items uh, that are on the list uh, were um, the rebuilding of the tennis courts, uh, the pickleball courts, doing them the right way at Metfield, uh, a new pontoon boat, uh, a rental boat, uh, repaving the Re uh, Rayburn Dam Road, which is in poor shape, uh, the fly tires uh, dock Windsor at Windsor, uh, and a fisheries pond, uh, two ponds, up uh, at the Loch Lomond, uh, uh, road paving at Blowing Springs, and upgrading uh, the gear garden, one of which is the uh, uh, picnic tables, which are equally as <laughs> bad as Tyree, um, and the Dectron unit uh, for up at Branchwood. So. Quite a number of projects have uh, made it through the first gate, and uh, we'll see if it makes it all the way to the end. But if you compare that to the uh, request list that the uh, committee put together, um, uh, uh, the board's done a pretty good job of uh, um, listening to and, and uh, fulfilling the uh, wants and needs of uh, the Recreation Committee. Excellent. Um, the big one uh, still outstanding is uh, Reardon Hall. Uh, renovation, but that's, you know, the survey is not even complete until uh, the 15th of this month. We're uh, knocking on the door of about 12,000 surveys. Um, all the um, uh, focus groups are done. Yay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, and uh, so we'll be putting all that information together. That All that information will be released to the community in January. So we're probably going to be talking sometime in, in uh, 2022. We'll be talking about uh, Reardon Hall and so forth. So I know that was your number one item on your recreation budget list, but it's a little bit, you know, we, we, we can't do the budget and then do the survey. You got to do the survey first and then do the budget. So Yeah, that's um, a big ticket item. It's a big ticket item. Yeah, so uh, a lot of stuff going on. Um, so no guarantees on any of the things that I mentioned until it's approved by the board. But uh, a lot of good progress. Uh, the board recognized that uh, the last couple of years our capital uh, budget allocation has been thin. Um, you know, the fire and so forth and everything that made it uh, thin. But uh, we're trying to uh, play some catch up. Excellent. Good news to start. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, Rick, you got the mic. All right. Um, just to remind everyone once again about the Lock Loman Drawdown, uh, scheduled for November the 4th to March the 1st. We're looking at three inches a day, uh, having it down by December the 10th. <clears throat> as far as our POA Rangers, their activity for the month, uh, they had 1,441 contacts, 88 people removed who weren't members. 122 contacts by boat and 148 uh, hours uh, on the, spent on the water. And um, this is down pretty significantly from September, which where we had about 3,450 contacts. And uh, same time in 2020, we were, were also down um, from uh, 2,629. Uh, we have had some cool weather this year, and I think that's curtailed some outdoor activity. Uh, let's see. Grounds maintenance. What have they been up to? Um, we've uh, been busy assessing some projects at Tanyard Creek for 2022, the little tributary there um, uh, from going from Lake Avalon into uh, Tanyard Creek. There's a uh, a trail that's adjacent to that that needs some protection because it's, it's eroding. We're going to address that this year. Um, we added some grab bars at the Lake Ann Courtesy Dock. We continue to replace rotten boards as they go bad. We're refurbishing some old buoys. Um, and we have installed new signs at Grant and Tyree and Stony Kirk. Um, the uh, Lakes Committee has been... Um, going over some uh, ways that we might be able to better inform the public about no wake zones. And so we're, we're now uh, have added flags to, um, to the no wake buoys to help those stand out a little bit better. And we've got signs explaining that at the boat ramps. So that, that'll hopefully uh, improve things there. And we've done some cold patch work at Lake Windsor and at, at the Norwood Dams to try to improve that uh, driving and walking surface there. <clears throat> uh, Lakes Ecology and Fisheries, uh, we did stock trout last Friday. Um, fish this year are gonna be a little bit on the small side. My producer has not, um, has had supply chain issues Thank you. Uh, and hasn't been able to get the good quality feed that they've had in the past. So the fish are smaller. Um, and last week, we also stocked hybrid striped bass on Loch Lomond, Windsor, and Lake Ann. And we begin our uh, fall trap net, hoop net, and gill net sampling this week, and that'll go through Thanksgiving. And again, like always, we ask those to people to go through their old photos and submit some fishing photos to What's the Catch. And that's what I have. All right. Fantastic updates. Appreciate it. And we'll move right along here to John, if there's anything for uh, additional comment about uh, the gun range or anything. Sure, I'll, I've got a couple of things. Uh, so November classes were full or very near full, even though I, I know last time when I was here, I was talking about adding capacity, we did that and, and we still ended up with pretty near full classes. Uh, I've also added some classes for December, which we normally don't do. Uh, and. We'll start a waiting list. We'll see about January and see where we get. Uh, we had two special events out at the Trap and Skeet Range. They're both well attended. Uh, 
which we pretty well expect for this time of year. Great shooting weather. Uh, as Gary alluded to, rifle pistol has been very busy, uh, as we always expect it to be this time of year. This is when the hunting seasons and that sort of thing start in, and, and it's really busy right now because uh, the opening week of weekend of deer season is next weekend. So uh, we'll probably be at capacity over at the rifle range for most of the week this week. Mm -hmm. uh, and then other than that, uh, also like Gary said, we're kind of winding down uh, over at Trap and Skeet and hopefully our, we will be winding down at Rifle Pistol after the hunting seasons wrap up. Uh, so we'll be starting a lot of maintenance projects. So just kind of, uh, you'll probably see a lot of maintenance going on as you, as you come out. I don't expect any closures at least uh, this side of the year. Probably at Rifle Pistol uh, during the new year, we'll probably have a couple of closures, but I'll get those well announced. So other than that, that's it. Okay, John, thank you for your thank report. Thank you. Okay. Moving along then to uh, recreation wellness from Joan. Well, thanks. We talked about a lot of things already, um, but just want to touch base on the erosion relative to a number of places, one, Metville Park, and two, Reardon. Um, if I was uh, in the bumper sticker business, I would probably say, welcome to Arkansas. And I say that a little tongue-in-cheek, but the reality is it's an ongoing battle in every location, including tennis courts, including Tanyard Creek and whatever. But that said, we have looked at both of those places. And as somebody alluded to earlier, it's not an easy fix. So it's going to be some major rebuilding and probably at Metfield, and keep in mind, some of the infrastructure was built many years ago, but there's kind of that berm behind. If you were facing the playground from the parking lot, there's that berm, and that's washing down the hill. So I have met with um, the, the crew that does a lot of our grading and all that, and so we're trying to work on a plan and then obviously work it into their um, schedule. So we have looked at it. We've also looked at Reardon. And over time, um, those washouts will continue. It's likely, will more likely that we'll take those concrete pads out. They're not terrible now. Um, and, and that sounds bad, right? Like, we don't want to wait until they're terrible. I don't mean it that way. But um, one, if I take them out, there goes the picnic tables because I can't get my hands on it. That's my other bumper sticker, by the way. Supply chain issue. That's a, it, and then dot, just dot, 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 right? <laughs> Um, so we take them out, and just today, I walked out there with Ashley um, to take a look at them again. And, of course, they were both in full use. Beautiful day. Doesn't, doesn't mean. So we have pushed uh, uh, gravel under there, but that's a very short-term fix. So I just wanted to let you know that it's an on, uh, ongoing battle, but we are aware of it, and we are looking for what we can do for the long term. Um, relative to the trails, just a heads up. Um, there is a annual race, although it skipped last year, called the Back 40 Race that will be happening on the trails this weekend. Um, in the past, it has been biking and trail running, but it's just trail running this year. The difference is um, they are going to use Back 40 trails on Saturday and a little sugar on Sunday. So um, you, if you sign up for the city text alerts, you might even see a text from them as well. Uh, one of the other things that's going to be happening on Wednesday that we do in partnership with the city, and uh, we appreciate the fire department for what they do with this, but we've at Reardon hosted a number of vaccine uh, clinics over the past year, and now we're hosting a booster clinic. It's this Wednesday. Um, there, We push, pushed out the information Friday in one of our e-letters, but the uh, link just went on on the website, and I can't tell you... Uh, if it's sold out already, because sometimes they go really fast. But just stay alert, because the fire department is doing more of those as, as they get their shots available. <clears throat> and then, um, oh, by the way, it's, it's for adults. I don't believe they're doing the children backs at that one. Um, the campground continues to be very busy. We were sold out again this past weekend. It used to be October was our busiest month, but November is looking really good. In fact, the tiny cabin on book solid in November, so that's a really good thing. And speaking of tiny cabins, supply chain. <laughs> <laughs> supply chain issues. Um, but we're still anticipating that they will hopefully be in by the end of the year. Um, I talked to my builder last week, and 
now the holdup has been on, um, we, we, we get those made extra well with extra insulation. Some people just put cabins like that, kind of a three season. We make ours four season and they, anyway, the insulation, the cell insulation um, was backed up. So um, they're in the works and um, we're excited about getting those in. Um, Thanksgiving hours, hard to believe that we're talking about Thanksgiving hours, but just a reminder, that's one of the few days that the three rec centers will be closed, but we're open regular hours starting on Friday. And, and we do push that information out and it'll be pushed out again, um, not only in the rec letter, that the letter that goes out this Monday, this coming Monday, but also it'll be pushed out in um, the upcoming regular e-letters and then marketing has already put it in the uh, November water bill. Uh, appreciate Scott for calling out uh, the kudos on the not so haunted house. No, sorry, wrong, wrong thing. Not so haunted mini golf. Um, I want to thank Jessica and the rest of my team that aren't here today, but this is really a, um, a fun event that recreation um, is able to do for the community. We are already planning for next year. Um, last year, you may recall, we did um, an event at Bloin Springs where we uh, made it COVID friendly, the not so haunted drive through, and we carried this theme to the, to the mini golf this year. And the beauty of this event is it, it's a lot of work on the front end, but once we get it set up, um, we had three weekends and basically two and a half weeks where people could fully enjoy the course and man, did they. We lit it up at night with black lights um, and there were plenty of photo ops. And as predicted, you know, definitely people were coming out to play the course. But some people with very young families and young children that maybe weren't going to play just came out and looked around at the decorations. And, and we call it not so haunted because there are some things that are kind of creepy. But, you know, we had alien skeletons and a spaceship. That's not too, too scary. And we had some photo ops with pumpkins. So were you going to say something? Cool. Yeah, I was just going to mention Rick and I. We stopped by the um, fly tires had, or the 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 one of the fishing groups had um, their garage sale, yard sale thing. And um, as we were leaving, our daughter looked out the window and said, "Oh look!" <laughs> and we were like, "Yeah, <laughs> sorry, we're not going to stop, but yeah, look over there." <laughs> and she was giant pumpkin and Aww. you know stuff. So That's she awesome. was she was really thrilled. That's awesome. So yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, and the team comes together to make it happen. So um, we are already planning for next year. Um, um, as Scott mentioned, the tennis courts were recently resurfaced, and again, supply chain. And the biggest holdup on that was the actual paint that we use on the surfacing, and it sounds like it's just really easy, basic paint. It's it's really specialty, and then they did all the crack filling too. The other nice surprise um, is that we just did the basketball courts at Rivery 2. So while it took a long time to get that in, we had some extras, so they went ahead and painted the basketball court. So um, I'm excited that, on that as well. And next up will be the painting of the two new pickleball courts at Branchwood. And they're under cure time right now for the concrete, but we'll be getting that, you know, again, weather dependent um, very soon. Joan, I didn't walk up the hill at Reardon. Are they going to do the shuffleball courts too? No. Not right now. It's not okay. on my radar. Our, our, it's not used very much. We might do it at one of the locations, but okay. those are pretty old and uh, they're played pretty seldomly. Yeah. So, um, not right now. I mean, never say never. Um, I've got sure. three shuffleball courts between the three parks, and it's likely we'll do one, but we probably won't do all three. Yeah, at yeah they are time. pretty worn too. Yeah. John, one, one quick thing. Um, the basketball courts at Midfield, the father and son team that I talked to, the, the dad um, said that he went to the, the pickleball courts there and he said that they were busy one day and he said that they actually had a team waiting and he said because of the basketball court there was already pre-painted for a pickleball court, he said that that team had their net with them, and they just set it up, and they just started playing there on the tennis or on the basketball court. So, yeah. So I appreciate you bringing that up. So, um, within the last couple of years, I did pretty much everything in my power when some of the capital funds weren't available to repair or expand pickleball before we start building the new courts, and that was a simple thing we could do: is paint the line 
and then there are a lot of people that are avid that put up their own portable nets. In fact, I, I shared this last uh, recently um, that that's kind of the way pickleball started is portable nets. It wasn't permanent structures, and a lot of people just still put those up, and they're very economical. So, yeah, they're they're using them everywhere. Um, Avalon Beach, um, I, I just a heads up because somebody mentioned the porta potties not there, but um, we will close those bathrooms. We're, we're trying to hold out until December because a lot of people in this nice weather are still using it, but we will close those bathrooms and then the porta pit remains. Um, you know, the park will get a lot less busy during the hardcore winter, winter months. And um, lastly, um, just want to mention that, um, as Tom said, feel really good coming out of the budgets. Appreciate the work that this team did. Um, tennis courts were ranked really high, and we, you know, anticipate that the community will support um, all that we've put in, um, and, and know that uh, we're working hard to sort of spread the funds around to a, a, a number of amenities. But there will all, always be some things that we can't quite get to as fast. Um, but continue to to share your thoughts and feedback and that's how we get stronger together so that's it for me I, I have a quick question Joan has anyone talked about anything like bocce but like, let's say for example since shuffleboard isn't real popular anymore maybe taking that amenity and making it into something else that is more popular like bocce yeah so um, bocce has been talked about in the past I would say it's been about three years since this committee was pretty strong about it the reality of bocce is it, you could build the actual course, but there's open play bocce. And a couple of years ago, we actually did do that at Reardon. All you need is a flat, grassy space, and you use the same equipment. You just don't have the actual you know, lines and everything, and it's, it's like a free play. It's very effective. There's no cost to it. I'd be, the last time I looked at it, and it's been a number of years, to do it, nice 20 grand to yeah. build and to to me right now i'm not i haven't been asked about bocce ball in a couple of years to be honest i'm not saying it wouldn't be used but again could bocce be done in a open area without a lot of cost yes and we could make that available as an italian it's near and dear to my heart <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let me rephrase just that. Kidding. I was just asked about bocce <laughs> for the first time in two plus years. I'm just, it's just but like, that space is about the space right, you would need. Exactly. The, yeah. the shuffleboard is of almost the exact same yeah. dimensions. And, I, you know, again, trying to use a space we already have rather than trying to build something from scratch would, would be ideal. So, well, just a thought. Yeah, it's fair, fair play for sure. <laughs> All right, well... Thank you for all those updates, and as usual, as is customary, we end on um, the marketing's note from Judy. Thank you, the most important. Yes. <laughs> and I will tell you, Jim, that my son, um, our son, Gary and I's son, uh, sells chemicals that go into pipes, and he's complaining as well. <laughs> it's true, though. He needs, um, my, he needs my bumper sticker. Yeah. <laughs> So um, we're doing good in marketing. Uh, we're wrapping up the year. It's a um, busy time right now for us trying to get um, the connections for December and the final and most beautiful of all the Inside Magazine together. Um, we have not heard of any printing or ink shortages, so <laughs> press our fingers. No cardboard problems, so that's you know, something you've got to look at the bright side. Um, other than that, I've got a few notes from what you brought up, and um, uh, we appreciate any input that you can give us on any area of the signs. Just, just recall that um, all the signs that happen typically come through our department, so if you see something, um, say something, because it's a lot of acreage and a lot of miles to cover, and um, on occasion we, we miss it, so appreciate that. Thanks. All right, okay, so as we come toward conclusion of this committee meeting, I must say I have some homework uh, before we get together in December. 
And that's, as we notice, we have a uh, position open and vacant right now um, from a person who um, resigned. So I have applications from folks who are interested in this. I'll review them and ask those who are still interested to come see us in December, introduce themselves, and, um, and let us know a little bit about them. And then we'll go ahead and, um, and, and take a vote for who we think is the right person for our committee. And then sometime in the early part of the year after the board confirms our selection, we'll bring this person on board and we'll be at full strength again. So that's what we got coming up for December. In December, we'll get together on 13, the 13th. I'm trying to make that a fancy way of stating it, but because it's just the 13th. But it's not Friday, it's Monday. So that's about it for now. And uh, we would need to officially end this meeting a motion to adjourn. So I'll don't be it. shy. Okay. I move we adjourn. All right, is there a second? All right, we are adjourned for November. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>